All right, so from the ultimate BI solution, what does the business really need? What are they really asking for? I'm sure everybody in this room knows of or has been to a buffet, correct? Okay. So a Chinese buffet, for example, or a seafood buffet or whatever, how do you construct your plate? Do you go by what the person in front of you puts together? No. You go out and you pick up the food. There's an available list of food there, right? And you pick the food that you want. And hopefully it's hot, and you put it on your plate, and you go back and you eat it. And if you're lucky enough, you can come back for seconds and thirds and whatever. So self-service BI is a lot like that. Uh, you know, it's not this panacea that people make it out to be. Uh, a lot of business users will tell you, hey, I want self-service BI. And what they're saying is, I want everything, everything, everything under the sun. Uh, you know, thing one and thing two from Cat in the Hat, right? <laughs> it's not quite what self-service BI really is. Uh, you can't just say, give me everything you've got and then deliver it. It doesn't work. You have to draw scope around it. And this is all lessons learned from projects gone past that we're all well aware of. But in self-service BI, you do want no ordering, no waiting, no sitting in line, no worrying about how it was cooked or the ingredients that were used uh, to cook the food. Obviously, you, you want to be uh, sensitive to allergies and things like that, right? But in a data set stack, it's very similar. You want to have a whole host of things that you cook and that you put in a cube or that you put in an OLAP solution or that you put into Microsoft Excel, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're spreading your data mart out there and you want to say to the business user, here's your data and it's slightly prepared or it's, you know, it's a finished piece of work. It's your Kung Pao chicken, for instance. And if you like Kung Pao chicken, we'll use this data mart. And if you want Hunan beef, use this data mart. So these are the kinds of things you want. So you still want to draw a scope around self-service BI. It's not a free for all and it never should be. So the point I want to make here though, is you don't see the kitchen right? You still have a kitchen that prepares all the raw ingredients. So, uh, so the data still requires back-end preparation. So you can imagine the, the, the buffet as being the data marts and the kitchen as being the data warehouse. So what does this look like and how do we get to a self-service BI solution? Well, first you've got the food growers, right? Which in this case is the farms. And you've got the source systems, right? They're providing the raw data. Then you've got the distributors, so the middleman. You take all this raw data, all this raw produce, all this packaged up stuff that comes off the farm, it's been washed and hopefully cleaned a little bit, um, well, aligned, I guess you could say. All the tomatoes are in one area and all the cucumbers in another area. So the, the uh, distributors tend to stack or stock these things together in large groups. So they use assimilation. But they don't necessarily take tomatoes and mix them with the cucumbers right then and there in the distribution site, right? Sometimes they'll repackage pallets and they'll build smaller packaging units to distribute. And that might be thought of as a global data warehouse, if you will. You take a slice of data out of your global data warehouse or your data vault and you ship it off to China or you ship it off to um, Norway or you ship it off to wherever it needs to be from a local perspective. And that's distributed computing. Then you've got the kitchen. Well, the kitchen is more of the data warehouse. So you've got the distributors with those ETL routines. They're moving the data into the warehouse. And then you've got the kitchens. You've got all the prep work. And you can see here, they're pulling raw ingredients, right? They're taking raw ingredients. And they're testing it. They're sampling it. They're adding all of what we call business rules. They're adding all these wonderful business rules, all these recipes to mix, match, and merge flavors to produce the data marts. And this is really what we want. Now, me as an end user, when I walk into a buffet, I don't care, nor do I ever want to see the kitchen, right? I don't, I'm not interested in the kitchen. I'm only interested in the end product. And this is where a lot of customers go wrong. They say, gee, I need direct access to the data warehouse. No, you don't. No, you don't. And, and you don't want to sell them that. You want to explain to them that the data warehouse is the kitchen and it's raw ingredients. And you really don't need access to this. So that's where the data vault fits. What they do need access to and where they should be is at the food buffet, the end of the line. Right? And this is where self-service BI expands. You see here, we've got a picture of another buffet. This is a dessert counter. 
right? So you've got one buffet for desserts, you've got another buffet for main dishes, you've got another buffet for salads. You don't necessarily put all the salad ingredients with the main dish because the main dishes have different requirements. And so this is kind of a good analogy that I like to use with businesses when I explain how the data vault processing line works. And this is essentially what we like to do. So data marts in my book are not necessarily star schemas or dimensional. And you gotta, you gotta take this uh, one point away. The data marts can be anything that the business user has access to. Okay, it could be a data mining application, it could be an in-memory analytics database or appliance, it could be a cube, it could be an Excel spreadsheet, it could be a flat file that you're feeding them, uh, it could be a dimensional data mart where they have ad hoc access from a BI perspective. But a data mart is basically anything, like a buffet, anything that a business user can see, touch, feel, have access to. So this is what we want. So this is how we get there. So to summarize, the data vault itself is built for multi-tiered architecture, right? And it would work well in the natural world. So I believe that they should be deployed in business intelligence, right? And this is why we've got the multi-tier solution. So what we just walked through in the kitchen is multiple tiers, right? We want to move the business rules downstream. Much like in the kitchen, the kitchen takes raw ingredients, applies recipes. This is where we want to we want to take the data out of the data vault or out of the warehouse and apply our business rule recipes to produce the data marts that the business users might want, right? And then from there, they have a degree of flexibility. That's where the self-service really comes in. They can take these different dishes and they can mix and match the flavors on their end if that's what they want. But, you know, we're going to present them with cleanse data and whatnot. But we're going to do this not going into the warehouse, but coming out of the warehouse or out of the data vault and going off to the data marts. So moving the business rules downstream closer to the business user. Uh, data warehouse is absolutely necessary. You're going to hear a lot, if you haven't already, heard a lot of barking by a lot of vendors out there today. You don't need a data warehouse. Is a data warehouse really necessary? You know, yes. Absolutely, yes, it is necessary. If you want enterprise business intelligence, you still got to have a storage area with all this history. You still got to collect it. It's like asking me if I've got a buffet style restaurant, if I still need a kitchen. <laughs> you still need a kitchen. You still got to have somewhere to process the raw ingredients, right? All right, so Hadoop and NoSQL, they're just additional sources for the data warehouse. Don't let anybody fool you. Now, there is something to be said there, and I've got it on another slide, and we'll come to that a little bit later. So the BI supply chain, this is really interesting. I can't tell you how many times I'm sitting in, a, we'll call it a Kimball bus architecture, a two-tier data warehouse, which is basically you've got a staging area with a bunch of history, and it's a bunch of haphazard data spread all over the place. And nobody knows what the data looks like or why it got there or how it got there. It's been transformed in several layers. And then you've got your loosely affiliated Kimball star schema uh, data marts, which are supposedly a logical data warehouse. And this is a problem. Every time there is a change from an enterprise perspective, the people have to go into this loosely affiliated set of star schemas, pull the data out, change the structures, change the ETL, and change the data, and then dump it all back in just to meet the business rules. This is the crux of the reasons for failure in data warehousing today. The number one reason is re-engineering because of change. And we want to avoid that completely. So the only way to do that is to have a three-tier architecture. Separate the business rules uh, from the business, or the business delivery from the raw data storage in the data warehouse. Okay, so this is what we're looking at.